Today we're talking about section 11.2, which is probability. Um, we've seen in the last part of this unit that uh, probability measures how likely it is for an event to occur. So uh, probability can be measured from 0 to 1. Um, an event that is impossible has a probability of 0 or 0%. 0 a uh, event that is absolutely going to happen um, has a probability of 100%. Anything else is in between. Now, there are two types of probability. We're only going to be dealing with one type, but I want to make sure that you know about the other one as well. Um, the first type is called experimental probability, and that is when you're trying to find the probability of something uh, to happen while it's happening. So, for example, if I have... Um, now, hopefully you know that uh, rolling dice, a six-sided cube, um, if I have two dice or I have one die. Okay, I have one die, I have two dice. Um, but uh, anyway, so if I'm rolling a die, um, and I'm trying to, uh, say I roll the die and I get a two, and then I roll again and I get a three, um, and then I roll again and I get another three, and I roll again and I get a four. Um, so if I'm rolling the, this dice and I'm recording the outcome, then I am finding the experimental probability of something happening. Okay. Whereas what we're actually going to calculate is we're going to calculate the theoretical probability. Okay, um, the experimental probability approaches the theoretical probability. Okay, it approaches the theoretical probability. Um, if we, you know, I only recorded four times rolling the die. Well, what if I roll the die a thousand times, or a hundred thousand times, or a million times, or a billion times, or whatever? It would that experimental probability would approach the theoretical. So we're going to calculate the theoretical probability. Now, um, the first thing we need to know in dealing with probability is what sample space is, and sample space is our possible outcomes. Okay, it's the set of all possible outcomes. So if you think of flipping a coin, okay, if we're flipping a two-sided, you know, all coins are two-sided, of course. So if we're flipping a coin, then we have a sample space that involves heads and tails. Okay, don't tell me the sample space is two. I agree that there are two things in your sample space, but your sample space isn't two. Your sample space is heads and tails. Okay, so that's flipping a coin. Um, if I was rolling the die like we were just talking about a second ago, then my sample space is one, two, three, four, five, and six because a standard die has six sides. So don't tell me that my sample space is six because there's six numbers. The sample space is a list of those numbers. So to find the theoretical probability, that's what we're going to be dealing with. The theoretical probability um, of event A, whatever that event is, we write it this way. The probability of A. Okay, so that could be the probability of flipping a coin and getting heads, or that could be the probability of rolling a die and getting a six. Okay, but that's how we write the probability. So the probability is measured or is found by taking the number of um, favorable outcomes or the outcomes that we're looking for and we divide it by the total number of outcomes. Okay, so M is what you're looking for. N is total number in sample space. So, for example, if I was uh, rolling a die and I wanted to find the probability of rolling a 2 on a standard six-sided die, well, I would say that there is only one two on a six-sided die, and there are six numbers in my sample space right here. We talked about the sample space of that. 
There are six numbers in my sample space. One of them is a 2. Therefore, the probability of rolling a 2 is 1 out of 6, or 1 sixth. Just so happens that the probability of rolling a 3 is also 1 sixth. It just so happens the probability of rolling any number on one single die is the same. Okay? So if I sat there and rolled a die over and over and over again, I might get repeat numbers like I did up here. Okay? Um, I might roll five fives in a row. But if I kept rolling that die over and over and over and over and over again, each number on that die would show up an equal number of times. Because they all have the same probability of showing up. We're going to see in some of our problems what are called OR statements. OR statements. So it says, um, when calculating an OR statement, you add the probability of each event together. So, what if I wanted to find the probability of rolling a 2 or a 3? Well, we just said that the probability of rolling a 2 is 1 sixth, and the probability of rolling a 3 is 1 sixth. So therefore, we are going to add these together which gives us 2 sixth, which reduces down to 1 third. So we have a probability of 1 third to roll either a 2 or a 3 on a six-sided die. Now the reason we add these together is because the 2 or the 3, those are the favorable outcomes. That's what we're looking for. Okay, And so out of our six options in our sample space, to go back up here to our sample space of that, out of our six options in our sample space, two of them are what we're looking for. So we have two items that we're looking for out of the six total items. All right. So um, we are going to end up talking about, now uh, we have a test coming up very quickly over this unit, or this section of the unit. Um, but this week, we're going to be talking about uh, coins and dice and cards and what's called game theory, okay? And they call it game theory. Now, yes, there are a lot of games out there that are involved in gambling, but we use them, uh, mathematically speaking, because it's a good way to study probability, okay? Rolling dice, drawing cards, all those things are a good way to study probability because they have a very finite uh, uh, solution, uh, they have a set of rules to them, and it's very easy to calculate the probability of those. Okay? Um, we will be talking about events that are mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive, which means that they can't happen at the exact same time. For example, you can't roll a 2 and a 5 at the exact same time on the one dice that you're rolling. Um, we're going to talk about events that are not mutually exclusive. So, for example, um, drawing a red card and drawing a king, well, it's possible to draw a red king. Okay, so that's not mutually exclusive. They are not two totally separate events. So, some of the things we're going to be talking about, just to make sure everybody's familiar with our um, uh, samples or what we're doing here. So, we're going to be working with coins, and coins always have two sides, a heads and a tail. It's not possible to flip both at the same time. Um, and we don't count the fact that where we're saying that there is no possibility of the coin landing on its edge. So it's either going to land on heads or it's going to land on tails. Um, dice or die, if you're talking about just one of them, um, are always going to be six-sided cubes. Yes, I understand that there are lots of dice out there that have multiple sides. Four-sided dice, six-sided dice, 12-sided dice, 20-sided dice, all that kind of stuff. But when we're talking about a die, it's always going to be a standard six-sided cube. Um, and again, we can only roll one number at a time. Cards. A little bit more to cards. Um, some people are more familiar with cards than others, so some of you are going to find this extremely boring. But uh, uh, for those of you who are not uh, too familiar with cards, then uh, please pay attention. There are 52 cards 
in a standard deck. Uh, we do not include jokers. Um, there are 13 cards of each of four sets. Excuse me. There are 13 cards of each of the four sets. These sets are called suits. Okay, they're called suits, and the four suits are spades, diamonds, clubs, and hearts. I kind of read that in the wrong order, and I apologize. So clubs look like the little clover leaves. Spades kind of look like a spade shovel, or an upside down heart, I guess. Uh, diamonds look like, well, diamonds, and hearts look like, well, hearts. Um, and notice that there are two different colors to that. Um, you can see it on my screen. You can't necessarily see it in your notes because they're in black and white. But the diamonds and the hearts are red. The clubs and the spades are black. Um, so therefore, there are 26 cards of each color. Each suit has exactly one ace. Of course, it's marked with the A. Um, there are three face cards in each suit. By the way, face cards are literally the cards that have faces on them. So we're talking about the king, the queen, and the jack. Um, the remaining cards are then labeled from the numbers 2 through 10. So, unless otherwise noted, we are not going to count any jokers in our calculations. So, taking a look then at the back side of your notes, we have our deck of cards. So, on this deck of cards, as you can see, we have two suits that are black, two suits that are red. The black suits are the clubs and the spades, the red suits are the hearts and the diamonds. Um, we have three cards in each suit that are considered face cards. So the jack, the queen, and the king are face cards. Um, the ace is always called the ace. It's never called one. Um, depending on what game you might be playing, it might be considered a one, it might be considered an 11, it might be a low card, it might be a high card. The ace can be all sorts of things. But um, we always refer to it as the ace. Okay, um, so let's try to find some probabilities then. Um, let's go ahead and start with uh, rolling a die. So just sing uh, one card, or I'm sorry, not a uh, card, one die, so think of dice, six-sided cubes, okay? So we want to know what's the prob probability of rolling a three. Well, we had said this on the front side. There is one three on a six-sided cube, and there are six numbers in our sample space, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So there is a one-sixth, or one out of six chance, of rolling a three. How about an even number? Well, again, our sample space is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So even numbers would be 2, 4, and 6. So the probability of an even number, there are three even numbers in our sample space, and there are six total numbers in our sample space. And so the probability is one half, 50%, or one out of two. Probability of rolling a seven. All right, well, again, our sample space is one, two, three, four, five, and six. There is no seven. So the probability of rolling a seven is zero out of six, or zero. Let's talk about um, drawing a uh, card, okay? So we're dealing with our standard deck of cards. If you take a look at the top of your uh, notes, you have your deck of cards up there. Yours are in black and white, so if you want to label which ones are red, which ones are supposed to be black, that's fine. Um, you know, however comfortable you are with the deck of cards, make those adjustments. So first off, we want to know what is the probability of drawing a 7? Well, if we take a look in a standard deck of cards here, we have four sevens. Okay, there are four sevens in a deck of cards. So, that means our 
uh, favorable outcomes, what we're looking for are the sevens. There are four of them. The probability of drawing a seven is going to be four out of, well, there are 52 cards. Oops. 52. Fifty-two cards in the deck, and so that can be reduced down to the fraction one thirteenth. Um, if you really wanted to do it as a decimal, I suppose you could, but and then you have to round. One thirteenth is exact. Um, it's approximately zero point zero seven seven. I mean, I would. I'm going to ask you to give it to me as a reduced fraction. So please, don't give it to me as decimals. Reduce the fraction. All right. We want to know, then, what is the probability of drawing a face card? Well, drawing a face card, looking back at our deck of cards, again, there are three face cards in each suit, and since there's four suits, there are 12 face cards. So the probability of a face card is going to be 12 out of 52. And 12 over 52 can be reduced down to 3 thirteenths. All right, well, how about the probability of drawing a red card? Well, again, two of the suits are red. Okay, the hearts and the diamonds. So that means probability of a red card, and I'm sure you've already guessed what this is going to be, but to show the work, we have two suits, 13 cards each, so that's 26 cards that are red out of 52, which gives us one half. There is a 50% chance of drawing a red card from a deck of cards. All right, let's kind of skip along here. Um, what if we wanted to do a, how about this one? Number 10, we want to know the probability of drawing the cards 4 through 10. So let's take a look at our, um, oh, let's write this down here, 4 through 10. The probability of 4 through 10, we know that there are 52 cards in our deck. Let's see how many cards we have that are 4 through 10. So looking back at our deck of cards, 4 starts here through 10. So 4 through 10, we're talking about 7 cards per suit, and there's 4 suits, that's 28 cards. And 28 over 52, that reduces down to 13, oops, excuse me, that is 7 thirteenths. Okay, now that would be different than a spade 2 through 6, because a spade 2 through 6 is only talking about the spades. Well, in the spades, 2 through 6, then we only have 5 cards that we're talking about. So the probability of getting a spade... 2 through 6 would be 5 out of 52. Oops, that's a 25, not a 52. Out of 52. Okay, fraction can't be reduced, so that would be your answer, 5 out of 52. All right, last example. Uh, what's the probability of drawing a red spade? Well, again, uh, probability, let's call this RS for red spade, and we know there's 52 cards in the deck. Well, the spades are one of the black suits, so therefore there are no red spades. They're all black, so that means there is 0 out of 52, or 0 uh, probability of drawing a red spade.